everyone, welcome to XSTEM All Access. I'm Asta Meineke and I'm so excited to be a part of this series showcasing some of the coolest minds in STEM. In this series, we'll dive deep into the diverse world of impactful STEM careers and the individuals leading the way in science, technology, engineering, and even math. As your guest host for this episode, I'm excited to chat with nuclear engineer, Dr. Sierra Sibbles. When you hear the term nuclear, what comes to mind? Perhaps you think of energy or maybe defense. Well, guess what? The nuclear field extends far beyond these things to a wide range of applications crucial for everyday life. Nuclear is everywhere, even in our own bodies. I guess you could say we're all nuclear. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up, but I knew that I wanted to help people and make the world a better place. When I was in middle school, I was introduced to engineering and it was described to me as a way to use technology to help people. In college, I went on to study mechanical engineering and robotics. And during college, I found even another way to help people. And that was through education and what I do today and sharing my passion for STEM education with others. Now, I hope you are as excited as I am to hear from our speaker, Dr. Sierra Sibbles. She's a nuclear engineer at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, whew, where she studies the properties of atoms to solve complex problems. Sierra, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Hi Aspen, thank you for having me today and hi to all the students. I'm happy to share with you a little bit about what it means to be a nuclear engineer. So let's jump into our first question. Our audience may not be familiar with nuclear engineering as there are many, many other engineering fields out there. So how would you describe the field of nuclear engineering? What exactly does a nuclear engineer do? So I actually wasn't as familiar with nuclear engineering when I first got into the field either. I actually was very interested in particles and things like antimatter and matter and those things coming together and creating something new. So I really enjoyed chemistry. And because I thought about being a chemical engineer, my mentor said to me, hey, you should think about nuclear engineering since you're really fascinated with atoms. And so that's kind of what nuclear engineers do. We look at the properties of atoms and we exploit those properties to solve complex problems, whether that's energy or cancer treatment. What a great reminder to keep an open mind to learning new subjects that may not be on your radar yet. Who knows, you might discover a passion you never knew you had, just like Sierra did. And now Sierra, you mentioned that nuclear engineers like yourself work to solve complex problems and I'd really like to learn more about that. Can you share what type of research you do at the Applied Physics Lab? So at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, the work that I specifically focus on is how does radiation interact with matter? So the question that we're typically solving is when you shoot particles at some material or some electronics, how does that change its properties? How do we ensure that our systems are able to operate in, say, a radiation environment? So sometimes when you think about space satellites, they are in space and they have to operate over a long period of time, say months or years. And in that environment, you have ionizing radiation, so you have protons and neutrons that will be interacting with the satellites. So we are really looking at, okay, how long can these satellites survive in this system? Wow, so you are replicating the harsh environment of space right now in the laboratory? How cool is that? In addition to space applications, this type of testing performed by nuclear engineers plays an important role in many industries like aerospace, defense, healthcare, and more. Let's take a look.
how so many different industries benefit from testing performed by nuclear engineers. Sierra, how does the work being done by you and other nuclear engineers impact our lives? So nuclear engineering impacts our lives in a variety of ways. I mentioned previously nuclear energy is a big proponent of some of the work that nuclear engineers do. But there's also nuclear medicine, so things like cancer, treatment, x-rays, medical imaging, those also have proponents of nuclear engineering at their core. Additionally, for defense applications, we look at radiation detectors or sensors. So if you think of portal monitoring and shipping containers, those have radiation detectors that are looking for nuclear material to ensure that we keep our country safe. You know, I bet most of us didn't even realize how significantly nuclear engineering impacts our lives and in so many diverse ways. The term nuclear can be a little bit intimidating or unnerving. So what are some common misconceptions about nuclear engineering that you encounter and how would you demystify them? So nuclear seems to have this negative connotation that nuclear is bad and that nuclear engineers only focus on one type of work. When in reality, nuclear is all around us. We as humans ourselves are radioactive. So to give an example, some everyday technology that people don't even realize is nuclear based are smoke detectors. So the way that smoke detectors work is they have ionizing radiation, they have a source embedded in them that creates a current. When smoke is impeding on that sensor, that smoke stops the alpha particles from creating current, setting off your alarm. So that's an everyday example of how, of how nuclear engineering and its properties are used in everyday life. Wow, nuclear really isn't an alarming term when we understand the benefits of its applications and how they have a positive impact on society. And so cool that even our own bodies are radioactive. Here's a fun fact. So now that we know that nuclear and radiation are not always a bad thing, what if one of our viewers wanted to go into the field of nuclear engineering? What types of tools or technologies do you use to conduct your research? And what skills do you think are most essential for someone aspiring to become a nuclear engineer? So as a nuclear engineer, we use a combination of different types of information. So we use math, we use physics, computer science, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering. So I would say that a big skill that people that are interested in doing nuclear engineering need to have is to be an active learner because you're going to take all of these different courses and combine them together to truly understand how to apply them as a nuclear engineer. The specific tools that I use in my everyday work are Monte Carlo radiation transport tools. So those tools look at how does, and they actually simulate, how do particles interact with different materials. And in addition to that tool, we also need computational analysis tools like MATLAB or Python. Wow, these are cutting edge technologies that play a vital role in the field of nuclear engineering. Sustainability and environmental issues are a top concern for many, many young people today. How does nuclear engineering contribute to addressing these global challenges, such as climate change and clean energy? Many nuclear engineers work in power plants. Power plants are a source of energy that doesn't produce greenhouse gases or carbon emissions. Did you know that one fuel pellet of uranium produces the same amount of energy as one ton of coal? That is a way that nuclear engineers are contributing every day to bettering our society. I think we all can appreciate the work being done to reduce greenhouse gases and carbon emissions in our environment. Let's take a look at other types of jobs that nuclear engineers might do.
there are opportunities in this diverse field for all education levels. Sierra, you have broken barriers and open doors for future female engineers in your field by becoming the first black woman to earn a PhD in nuclear engineering from the University of Michigan. So what advice do you have for girls or any student with an interest in pursuing nuclear engineering as a career field? My biggest advice would be to not be afraid to take risk and always be confident in yourself. My mentor in undergrad said to me, hey Sierra, have you ever thought about doing something other than teaching? What about doing research in nuclear engineering? You know, if you get your PhD, you could become a professor and teach and also do research. And for me, because that was something I had never heard of, it was a risk that I decided to take and look where it got me. I agree. Stepping out of your comfort zone can lead to discovering your true passions and strengths. And mentors can be a valuable resource to provide guidance and insight into the unknown. I know when I made the transition from engineering to education that it was scary and full of uncertainty, but through having mentors in my community of classmates, I felt like I could do anything and I found my true path. So for our final question, what are some of the coolest and most innovative applications of nuclear technology that you've come across in your career or those that are coming up in the future? So I may be a little biased, but I think radiation detectors are some of the coolest technology as it relates to nuclear engineering. For me specifically, I think radiation imagers are very cool. So the way that you're able to not see things physically, but be able to measure them by instrument is really unique and fascinating to me. For me specifically, with my PhD work, I worked on building radiation sensors that were able to verify underground nuclear explosion testing. So we, what we did was we measured radio xenon in the atmosphere to try to determine if any fission products were present. So some of the up and coming technology in this arena is building more sensitive detectors, more small detectors, looking at alternative detector materials to see if we can better identify these fission sources. Those detectors are crucial for our national security. What's more important than that? Sierra, thank you so much for joining us today and it was a pleasure speaking with you. So I hope you learned a little bit about nuclear engineering today. I want to say thank you, Aspen, for having me. And also remember to be confident no matter what you think or what you do, always be confident in it. I really enjoyed learning the diverse applications of nuclear engineering and gaining a greater understanding of the benefits this field offers all of us. Thank you for tuning in today. And make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel in the description below and follow us on social media to get updates about all the new episodes. I promise you won't want to miss a thing. Plus, you'll get access to fun weekly content for students and teachers, such as STEM facts for students, classroom tips for teachers, and so much more. And don't forget to check out the full library of episodes on demand right here. Each one has an NGSS and Castle Align lesson plan for teachers to use in the classroom. And with your parents' permission, tell us how you were inspired today by tagging us at USA Science Fest, hashtag XSTEM, and me at Aspen underscore Meineke. Keep up with me through social media by heading to my Instagram or YouTube channel at Aspen underscore Meineke for more STEM fun. I had such a blast being your host today, but don't sign off just yet. You'll want to stick around through the end of this video for a fun trivia game that you can do in the classroom or at home. Have fun and good luck!